The Chicago Bears have interviewed Greg Roman as the fifth OC candidate for the open position, a candidate in which a lot of Bears fans have been bringing up his name since the beginning. We're going to talk about his qualifications and why he may be the front runner to land the position for the Chicago Bears. Mel Kuyper also says that the Bears could get a first-round pick back in the trade for Justin Fields. We're going to talk about the validity of that and why this is an important offseason for Ryan Poles. And so far, he's doing it pretty well. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm one of the hosts here, Hayes, holding it down for C-Dub and Bobby. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And the first thing that I want to talk about in this is Greg Roman has now been interviewed by the Chicago Bears for their open uh, offensive coordinator position. And this is a guy that a lot of people have been bringing in, uh, bringing up since the, the coordinator position became open. He is the most experienced candidate that the Chicago Bears have uh, have interviewed so far. And a lot of people feel like a hiring of Greg Roman could mean that Justin Fields is going to return as the quarterback. I won't say that that's necessarily true. Uh, you know, Caleb Williams is also a more quarter, uh, mobile quarterback who runs less than Fields, but uh, Greg Roman could do wonders with him as well. So I want to just kind of address that from the get-go because I know a lot of people are going to jump in immediately. What does this mean for Kayla Williams or Justin Fields? And I think either way, no matter which direction you go, Roman is a great choice and candidate for this. He was the uh, the OC for the 49ers from 2011 to 2014. He was Buffalo's offensive coordinator from 2015 to 16, and then the offensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens from 2019 to 2022. This is a guy, like I said, the most experienced candidate that the Chicago Bears have interviewed thus far, and he brings a a, a, a bevity of, of, of experience with him that his offenses work. When you look at it, three of the years with the 49ers, they ranked at in top five in the NFL in scoring. The Ravens were number one in scoring in 2019 and 2020, and his worst offense was in Buffalo, and even then, the Bills were ranked 20th overall, and that was with Tyrod Taylor as the quarterback of their under coach, Anthony Lynn. This guy gets results. That's just what it comes down to. He's 51 years old. He's been in the NFL since 1995, starting off as a strength and conditioning coach and then being promoted to offensive assistant. And at that point in time, he moved over to the Texans of being a tight ends coach and a quarterback coach in 2004, 2005. This guy has experience all up and down. And I believe it was Bobby who mentioned how with offensive coordinators, it's really good as they're gaining their experience over years to work with different positions, position groups on the offensive side of the ball. This is a guy who brings the much needed experience that the Chicago Bears uh, need on that offensive coordinator position. Probably, like I said, may be the front runner now to land the position for the Chicago Bears. Now, again, that comes up and down. We we'll end up seeing what comes with this. But Greg Roman is a great candidate for the Chicago Bears. When you look at the quarterbacks that he's worked with, what he's been able to bring in, this guy can really come in, work under Matt Eberflus, who is still a, a inexperienced uh, head coach, and he brings just that level of excellence and experience and results. He's gotten results just about everywhere that he's been the offensive coordinator at and has worked with quarterbacks to help get the most out of them. So this is a guy that I didn't know if the, if the Bears were going to interview. I didn't know if he was going to even want to come to this position, but the fact that he's interviewed, he now jo- joins Shane Walden, Clint Kubiak, Liam Cohen, and Greg Olson as players that have interviewed for the Chicago Bears offensive coordinator position. And while people have some issues, not everybody universally loves Greg Roman potentially as the next OC of the Chicago Bears. I think this guy, you can do a lot worse than him. And I think this is a guy that also, like I said, regardless, and I've said this several times, and I want to make sure I keep saying this, the offensive coordinator position and what it means, yes, it means a lot for whoever's at the quarterback, but it's also more than that that's at stake here and what you want out of those guys. So the fact that they've already interviewed him, they didn't announce that they were going to request the interview, they've already gone through interviewing him for the position. I think this is a great sign. I think this is this adds to what Kevin Warren and, and Ryan Poles are doing with this uh, this offensive coordinator search, and they are taking this seriously. They are trying to bring in guys. You, if you notice, they all have similar style offenses. There's another guy in Greg Roman who can come in, build that offensive system and scheme around the players that we have here. Some questions about how they run the ball, things like that. That eludes no no prospect is going to be perfect for this team, 
But but Greg Roman is a damn good offensive coordinator. If you guys can't tell, I'm de- I'm definitely excited about what he could bring to this team with experience and things like that. And it ups the expectations for what the Chicago Bears offense could be. Maybe not in year one. You want to lay that foundation, things like that, see how they take those concepts. But again, as being an experienced coach that has worked with quarterbacks before, regardless of who the quarterback is next year for the Chicago Bears, I tr- trust Greg Roman to bring those guys along, to build the system around them, and to be able to to have an offense that isn't as stag- nearly as stagnant as what it was under Luke Getze. This is a real coach. This is a real guy who's going to develop this team if he does end up coming in. And I guess we'll just see if he ends up landing the position to be the offensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears. But guys, let me know what you guys think down below. When you see Greg Roman's name listed now as a, as, a, as a coach that the Bears have interviewed for that OC position, do you like him? Do you think that this is a guy who should be like me, the front runner now for the position? Do you like some of the other guys that the Bears have interviewed more? Uh, we are now, like I said, up to five candidates right now for the that offensive coordinator position. And the Bears, like I said before, they're going to interview probably about eight to ten people. But don't be surprised if a decision is made by the end of this week as the Bears are really progressing in those decisions. Now, with that said, another big decision for the Chicago Bears this offseason is what to do with not only the first overall pick, but maybe even with Justin Fields. Well, Mel Kuyper Jr. seems to think that the Bears could get a first-round pick back from the Atlanta Hawks for Justin Fields. And he says this, if you trade Justin Fields to Atlanta, you can get the eighth overall pick. Now, this is something that we've heard before. We've even gotten a voicemail on it before. But I think that most people will kind of be surprised if that's the level that somebody gives up for Justin Fields, if the Bears even decide to move on from him. But it does offer a unique situation where if, if you're reviewing everything and taking a look at, at every option ahead of you, does getting a first round pick for Justin Fields, if you're deciding to move on, because we talked about on Sunday's live stream, potentially holding on to Justin, regardless of what you do with the number one overall pick to kind of see, bring in some competition. But I do think that if the Atlanta Falcons, and I said Hawks, I'm sorry, if the Atlanta Falcons come calling with a first overall pick being the the thing that they're offering and dangling in front of you, it's a bit of a pause there, uh, to try to get Justin Fields off you, it's definitely something that the Bears are probably going to have to look at. They're probably going to have to review. They're probably going to have to take a, a decision on uh, if they want to review that and maybe run things back. So oh, overall, I still think things are kind of pointing to Justin Fields returning as the quarterback. But again, that's with what we know right now. That can change immediately. That can change uh, with the first week of free agency. That can change a month from now, right? So ultimately, it does come down to Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren evaluating every single thing ahead of them. And that is what's, what most, what's most important right now, is evaluating everything and making the decision that is going to be best for your team in the present and in the future. And that's what Ryan Poles has in front of him. And that's why this is an important offseason for Ryan Poles and what he does, right? We got tough, t- tons of decisions in front of him. And one of those first decisions, of course, is the offensive coordinator. But we talked about that. But then the Jalen Johnson decision. What is a reasonable deal to pay for Jalen Johnson? We hear that Ryan Pohl said in that press conference that Jalen will be back, right? And maybe it is something at this point where Ryan Poles and the conversations that they've had already with Jalen Johnson's representation feels very confident that that number, they're going to be able to agree upon it. But if you do not sign Jalen Johnson to a long-term deal, you, you have other questions there. But I do think, you know, lock in Jalen Johnson. You've already locked in Montez Sweat. Lock in those veterans that can secure you and that have already played really well for you and then decide what you're going to do. But the defense is something that the defense is further along than the offense right now. But that depends on what offensive coordinator you come in, which could excel that look and that view of that defense as well. But it's 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 further ahead. And the Bears, you know, in making the right decisions this offseason with some of those defensive decisions. But Jalen Johnson is definitely one of the first ones to do with that. But then outside of that, what else do you do with the defense? You have Montez Sweat there on that defensive line. You got uh, George, uh, you got Zach Pickens, you got Javon Dexter, you got the players that showed a little bit of flashes. You've already locked in Andrew Billings. Do you go out there and get another big time edge, be it either in free agency or in the draft? But the but right now with with Montez Sweat and if you lock in Jalen Johnson, the defense you got a couple of other things to do on it. Uh, but you have if you if you attack it in free agency, this could be a defense that is definitely one of the top 10 to 5 defenses in the NFL, and that's when it comes down to it. It, Especially when you have still questions around your quarterback, when you can have a solid defense that is is there. You know what that defense is going to be. It makes things easier on either a rookie quarterback or a quarterback that's still developing in Justin Fields. 
And so getting that field position, getting other team opposing teams off the field, stopping them from scoring points, the defense is going to be one of the most important things to see how Ryan Poles addresses because we the, not only because of the potential we already have on that unit, but to help the progression of that offense overall as well. So let's hope that we see that. This is a big sign for it. Um, when you look at what when it comes down to it, Montez Sweat, TJ Edwards, um, Tremaine Edmonds, Jav- uh, 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 Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon, um, Tyreek Stevenson. We got dogs on the defensive side of the ball. Didn't mention Jack Sanborn, right? We got dogs on that. How you flesh out the rest of that, I, this could really put the Bears in great shape for the defense, not just for next season, but for many years to come with the, the combination of veterans and youth that we have on that defensive side of the ball. Outside of that, what do you do with the wide, wide receiver position for the Chicago Bears in this offseason? We know we got a big decision, big-ish, to make on Darnell Mooney, even though I think Darnell Mooney's gone. But you never know. A, a offensive coordinator, again, like a Greg, uh, 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 a Greg Roman, uh, could come could look at uh, Darnell Mooney and say, "Nah, I think that I can get I can make this guy work here." Depending on what he wants back, you never know. Greg Roman could definitely look at Darnell Mooney and say, "Listen, let's still go out and get another big time wide receiver." But this guy Darnell Mooney, I like some of what he brings. So that's a big decision that Ryan Post has to make either way with the wide receiver position. What are you going to do with that position for the Chicago Bears? Right? We know that we got DJ Moore. He's a stud. You can lock him in. We like DJ Moore. We love DJ Moore, one of the best wide receivers. Montez Sweat called him the best wide receiver in the game of football, but one of the best. If you can build out this wide receiver core and and get more depth there, more quality depth there, that that can really be something that propels the rest of your team forward as well in what you've already done solidly in other places. Yes, we still need an offensive tackle. We need a center. Those are things that definitely need to be addressed as well. But that that what the Bears, what Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren do with that wide receiver position is really big. They got a lot of things at their disposal, a lot of really good wide receivers outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. that you can take with either one of your first-round picks to add a big-time wide receiver to that, and we'll see what they do with the rest of it. So when you look at free agents that could be there in the wide receiver, you got Gabriel Davis, Tyler Boyd, Kurt Samuel. These are guys that really could come in and fill in a nice number two for you, and you could still go out and get one in the draft on top of that. That would give us a wide receiver core that, we have not had here in Chicago maybe ever, but definitely not in almost a decade. So that's something. If you can build at that wide receiver core, get your quarterback, uh, those big-time weapons uh, to help that development along, it can really do wonders for the Chicago Bears. So Ryan poe has got a lot of decisions to make. Um, him, Like I said, I always mention him and Kevin Warren since we're hearing things of Kevin Warren stepping down more and, and even being involved in things more. So uh, Ryan Poles has to have a good draft. This is not a draft where you can flub the draft. When you look at what you can get for that number one overall pick, you have to have a good draft as well. Solid enough free agency, number six in overall uh, a spending power. So we got to use that and combine those things to really take this team into the next stratosphere where we can go. And hopefully next year we're talking about the Bears being a being a team now who's fought and gotten their way into the playoffs. And and we're we're, at, we're looking up at that point in time. We're making the right the right uh, movement in the same in the right areas that we need to, so we can take those steps up. But let me know what you guys think on all that. Now, it's been a busy time for the Chicago Bears, which means the voicemail back is filling up. We've got two voicemails I'm going to play today. This first one, this one's from Darius. What's going on, Hayes? Uh, Darius from Dallas here. I had to call back one more time, man. I, I feel like the fan base, hell, even some of the media, too, is focusing too much on the quarterback position. And, and when I say that, uh, I say because I know that a couple episodes ago you were saying, you know, does the does – the, Success that CJ Stroud and that uh, that he's having does that put more pressure on our GM? Uh, and my answer is no. I don't think it does because I think we're looking at the wrong part of it. Um, had we drafted CJ Stroud and he had to come in here and throw 15 screen passes a game, he will be saying he's a bust too. Uh, so we need to focus more on the process. Like the offensive coordinator should be way more talked about than who we're going to get for quarterback. Uh, because if we go get uh, uh, Caleb Williams or, um, you know, my favorite, Michael Penix, it's not going to matter if the fucking offensive of coordinator sucks. So we, we can talk about who's going to be the quarterback and who looks the best in the combine and all that shit. But, guys, until we get an offensive of coordinator uh, that, that knows how to develop these guys and stop getting these newbie motherfuckers, like get a well-established offensive of coordinator that has called plays within the past five years, three to five years. No, I don't want no startup motherfucker who just, you know, kind of, you know, 
We need people in there who are going to be experienced and know how to get the best out of this kid. And it doesn't even have to be a sexy name. You know, it could be somebody who just knows how to get the basics done, uh, you know, that, that doesn't take 15 games to realize, oh, man, D.J. Moore is good at crossing routes. You know, we need we need people that, that are smart, that are IQ uh, savvy when it comes down to uh, football and calling the plays and when to call them. So, uh, you know, I, I know we're going to get all the quarterback talk in and, and all that, but I could give a fuck, honestly. I mean, I personally want to keep Justin, but until we get a good offensive coordinator, man, y'all can stop getting excited about these quarterback uh, prospects. My opinion, uh, but that's just where I'm at on the whole thing, man. Let me know what you think. Texas up there, damn. Great point here. And the offensive coordinator should be more of a focus than the QB. And I think um, we're seeing them put uh, understand the the seriousness of how they need to attack this offensive coordinator position. And with who the Bears have interviewed, it can't just be Matt Eberflus making these decisions. Kevin Warren and Ryan Poles are definitely involved in that. And I do think getting an established offensive coordinator is definitely. Definitely the, the important part of it. Now, you did say that it doesn't have to be the big, the sexy name for the Chicago Bears' next offensive coordinator. Uh, Greg Roman could do both those things, but much like I've said on streams before, it's about getting the right guy, doing your due diligence and getting the right guy. That is why you're seeing the Bears interview so many candidates for this offensive coordinator position because they want to make sure it's not just going out and getting whoever the biggest name is, not just going out and getting maybe the guy who has the most experience. It's going out and getting the person who is going to have be the right guy for the direction that you see this team taking and that's going to develop this offense, build this system around so we can be one of those teams finally that has a damn good offense and a great defense, and we can see where the Chicago Bears can go at that point. It's an exciting time, my brother. Thank you, Darius, for leaving that voicemail. Let's get into the next one. This one's from Grego. What up, Scott Bears Central? This is your boy, Grego. I know it's been a minute. I've been on a little hiatus, man, work and life and all that. But anyway, I just want to say, man, uh been wrong with you you boys for at least the whole year. And I'm going to tell y'all, not only y'all the best podcast for Chicago Bears content, fuck that, y'all the best podcast out there. Ain't nobody doing it like this. I mean, as far as uh, giving the content, making it interesting, engaging with the fans, good and bad. <laughs> More importantly, man, I just want to talk about these bands. You know, if y'all, I remember one of the last uh, podcast, I mean, I called in, it was about, uh, well, that, Tyson Bates and uh, Justin Fields both sitting there putting out there. And I I had said, I said, you know what? The Bears as an organization, fuck the Bears when it comes to uh, a quarterback. And this is why I say why. Not only that we have never had a 4,000-yard uh, passer, but we have never had a team that was primarily built around a quarterback. This organization has not proven to me they know to do with anything. And I also said, fuck Caleb Williams. I don't see it. I'm not saying Caleb Williams is going to be a bust. Caleb Williams is going to be nothing like Justin Fields. Look, Justin Fields is a, a work, uh, you know, workaholic, so to speak. He puts the time in. He gets better. And think about what the things he had to go through in his young career. Y'all already know other quarterbacks have been, other players have been pissing and moaning and complaining and putting the blame on everybody else but themselves. Justin Fields did the opposite. And this is coming from a Michigan man. So anyway, I'm a Justin Fields. Uh, wherever he go, I, I hope he stay with the Bears. But if he goes to somewhere like Atlanta, I'm going to be a Atlanta fan. Because I am a Justin Fields dude. And uh, by the way, just call up goddamn and bet out, nigga. Peace. First, thank you for calling us the best Bears podcast. It means the world. I speak for C-Dub and Bobby when I say that that means everything to us. And when we built this platform, it was it, what did we say? This is for fans, right? This is, this is, this, we are the voice of the fans because we are the fans of this team. And it means a lot to hear you say that. Now, as far as that the Bears have never ha had a team built around a quarterback, you're absolutely right. And so that may be what, how the changing of the guard works for this team and getting us into new places and new heights for as a franchise is, is changing our offensive approach. And much like you, you guys know, I'm a guy who I would like to see Justin Fields put in a better situation. Get the right offensive coordinator. Shore up that, that offensive line. Get those weapons in here. But it really comes down to this. I can't say trust in Ryan Poles and then have and say that I, if he doesn't do what I want, that I'm going to be upset. And trusting in Ryan Poles and his decision making, it may mean that I may not agree with some of the moves that he makes, but I have to stay open to the fact that it may be the right move for the team. And if, if Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren look at this situation and say, no, it's time to move on from Justin Fields, I'm going to trust it. I'm not. I'm going to still have my opinions and thoughts, 
And if it doesn't work out, damn well, I'm going to be boisterous on it. But guess what? If it does work out, I'm going to be one of the Bears fans celebrating it as well. Just make the right decisions. That's what it comes down to. Yes, I'm going to say my opinion because this is a show. This is a podcast. I'm going to give my opinion on what I would like to see the Bears do. But when it comes down to it, make the right decisions. That's it. Make the right decisions. And if the Bears do that and they trust themselves, they trust in the decisions that they make and they end up working out in the long run, Bears fans are going to be happy. You're going to have Bears fans that are upset initially one way or another. Regardless of what you do with Justin, regardless of what you do with the number one overall pick, they're going to be Bears fans on both sides, positive and negative, on their uh, feelings on that. But when it comes down to it is this, your job as a GM, your job as a president in Kevin Warren isn't to do what the fans want but it's to do what the fans and the team need to get this, this franchise to a place of being successful. And that's what we need to see this team do. And I agree, we've never had a, a, a team built around a quarterback. Maybe that changes now. Maybe that changes going forward in years to come for the Chicago Bears. And let's hope that that's the case and we'll end up seeing. But one thing that's for sure, we'll be covering it right here on Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we're on. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Central at gmail.com. Then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, thanks to you guys. And like I liked in everything on, shot town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.